Hello and welcome to our Sunday morning service for Sunday the 17th of January. As I'm filming this, it's a lovely sunny day. I have no idea what the weather will be like as you're watching it. But it reminds me of the light of God's presence, that the light shines in the darkness through all seasons. So let's pray as we begin our worship together. Lord God of light and truth, send your spirit upon us this morning as we worship you. Amen. We've taken the decision not to have our services on Wednesdays or show this service on Sundays. We remain online for everyone's safety. We're praying for you through this lockdown. If there's anything we as a church can do to support you or others you know in need, do let us know. Let's worship God together. Let us come to God in confession, knowing that he is gracious and welcoming. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. The Lord enrich you with his grace, and nourish you with his blessing. The Lord defend you in trouble, and keep you from all evil. The Lord accept your prayers, and absolve you from all your offences. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. And so we come to a time of sharing the peace together. In doing this, I invite you to maybe send a text message or to make a phone call or to make a note of someone that you will contact today to share the peace with. And so I say, peace to you from God, our Heavenly Father. Peace from his Son, Jesus Christ, who is our peace. 
peace from the Holy Spirit, the giver of life, the peace of the triune God be always with you. And so we share together a sign of that peace. Let us pray together. As we turn to our loving Heavenly Father in prayer, let us become aware of his presence in and around us. At any time of the day or night, we can call on Jesus. He is always waiting, listening for our call. What a wonderful blessing. No phone needed, no emails just a whisper. God is with us, but more, God is within us, giving us existence. God knit us together in our mother's womb and every day he sustains us. Let us dwell for a moment on the beating of our hearts, the ebb and flow of our breathing, the workings of our mind, all these are a sign of his life-giving presence within us. Each new day is a gift from God. The early signs of spring remind us that our creator God is constantly recreating, making all things new. Father, thank you for all that you've allowed into our lives this past year. The good along with the hard things which has reminded us of how much we need you and rely on your presence filling us every single day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God is a with us God. On the heels of the celebration of the birth of our King Jesus, that reminder has the power to carry us right into a fresh new start. He is Emmanuel, God with us. And though things and people around us shift and change, our God never changes. Father, we pray for your spirit to lead us each step of this new year. We ask that you will guide our decisions and turn our hearts to deeply desire you above all else. We ask that you will open doors needing to be opened and close the ones needing to be shut tight. We ask that you would help us release our grip on the things to which you've said no, not yet, or wait. We ask for help to pursue you first above every dream and desire within our hearts. We ask for your wisdom, for your strength and power to be constantly present within us. We pray you would make us strong and courageous for the road ahead. Give us the ability beyond what we feel able. Let your gifts flow freely through us so that you would be honoured by our lives and others would be drawn to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your protection over our families and friends. We ask for your hand to cover us and keep us distant from the evil intent of the enemy, that you would be a barrier to surround us and that we would be safe in your hands. We pray that you would give us discernment and insight to understand your will, hear your voice and know your ways. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we bring before you all those in need of healing, comfort and strength. We think especially of those alone through lockdown. May they be aware of your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all key workers 
especially those working in hospitals and care homes, many of them exhausted. Please strengthen them, Lord. We pray for a speedy and successful rollout of the various COVID-19 vaccines, allowing our schools and businesses to reopen, bringing this lockdown to an end. Lord, please heal our land. We bring the turmoil in the USA before you and we pray for a peaceful transition of power and an end to the anger and division. Please give their new president and vice president wisdom and humility. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, may we be lovers of truth. May the fruits of your spirit be evident in our lives. May we make a difference in this world for your glory. Set your way before us. May we reflect your peace and hope to a world that so desperately needs your presence and healing. To you, Father, be glory and honour in this new year and forever. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Almighty God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace, and in the renewal of our lives make known your heavenly glory, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We always thank God for all of you and continually mention you in our prayers. For you know that we dealt with each of you as a father deals with his own children, encouraging, comforting and urging you to live lives worthy of God who called you into his kingdom and his glory. One Thessalonians chapter three, one to ten. So when we could stand it no longer, we thought it best to be left by ourselves in Athens. We sent Timothy, who is our brother and co-worker in God's service and spreading the gospel of Christ, to strengthen and encourage you in your faith, so that no one would be unsettled by these trials. For you know quite well that we are destined for them. In fact, when we were with you, we kept telling you that we would be persecuted. And it turned out that way, as you well know. For this reason, when I could stand it no longer, I sent to find out about your faith. I was afraid that in some way the tempter had tempted you, and that our labours might have been in vain. But Timothy has now just come to us from you and has brought good news about your faith and love. He has told us that you always have pleasant memories of us, and that you long to see us, just as we also long to see you. Therefore, brothers and sisters, in all our distress and persecution, we were encouraged about you because of your faith. For now we really live since you are standing firm in the Lord. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy we have in the presence of our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you again and supply what is lacking in your faith. Thessalonians 5 verse 14 And we urge you, brothers and sisters, Warn those who are idle and disruptive, encourage the disheartened, help the weak, be patient with everybody. Please join me as we say the creed together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I want you to just take a moment to picture a person. Someone who has been one of the greatest encouragers encouragers to you in your life. I want you to think, what is it that makes them so special? What is it about them? What is it they do? What is it about their nature? What is it that makes them so important to you as someone who has encouraged you more than someone who's just had a little bit of influence on you? Have you got that person? Good. Throughout the rest of this talk, I want you to try and think about those qualities of that person and see if some of what 1 Thessalonians teaches us about encouraging others, see if some of that resonates with what you see in others. See, I wonder, have you ever been in a conversation with someone where you're in a crowded room, there's lots of people around, and as you get into a conversation with someone, you are listening intently to what they say, you've got your eyes fixed on theirs, and they're talking to you. But then as the conversation flows, as it moves on, and you start to talk, what you realise is that their eyes are wandering all over the room, that they're not engaged with what you're saying, they're not listening to you. And sure enough, as you talk, sometimes even mid-sentence, you realise that moment where they're ready to move on to the next conversation with someone else, and they'll say, sorry, I just need to go and speak to somebody. You see, that feeling of knowing that as you were talking, they were not present with you. They were not listening. They were just talking at you and then move on. You see, in chapter 1, verse 2 of 1 Thessalonians, right at the very beginning, Paul gives this prayer of thanksgiving at the start, which is not just a conventional, generic opening statement of a letter. It is a genuine expression of his feelings toward the Thessalonians. See, Paul is not writing this letter with one eye looking onto the next letter he's going to write to another church or just giving a standard opening. He is present entirely in his letter to the Thessalonians. You see, when we have a genuine love for others, when we are genuinely present with them, our attention is fixed on them in that moment. You see, how are we with others, particularly in lockdown? Are we genuinely loving others in a way that we are totally present with them rather than looking for the next thing? You see, if we are to give thanks and to encourage others, then we need to be present to each person individually. And maybe when you think of that person that I asked you to think of, the one that is a great encourager to you, maybe one of the qualities that you recognise is that When they're with you, you feel like you have their undivided attention. They are present with you. You see, the importance of each person as an individual is pulled out further. So in chapter 2, verses 11 and 12, Paul writes that we exhorted each one of you and encouraged you. You see, the Greek for each one is more emphatic than the simple each, as in a generic term, Paul is quite literally saying that he had not contended himself with just giving a message in general terms to the Thessalonian public at large, but he had been sufficiently interested in individuals to bring it home to each one by one. See, we can give generic messages of encouragement to a group of people. We see that doesn't come close to the power of personal encouragement to an individual. See, when we approach each individual, when we give them that attention, when we encourage them, when we focus on them as an individual, 
it may be that we start to see things in them that they don't even see themselves. The famous director, film director of the Lord of the Rings trilogy and the Hobbit films, Peter Jackson, was flying over fields in New Zealand in a helicopter and he was with some of us. And as he was flying, they were looking for a location to film, the location for Hobbiton. Others with him looked down and just saw empty fields, but as Peter Jackson got to a certain part, he looked down and he saw a different landscape of what could be. He looked down and pointed and said, there it is, that's Hobbiton. While the people with him just saw empty fields, he saw something of what could be. And when we think of a person who's been a great encourager to us, did they see something in us that maybe we didn't even see ourselves? See, as we encourage others, we look at them and we see them through a different lens and we see them through what they could be. 1 Thessalonians continues in chapter 3, verse 2. Paul writes of why he sent Timothy to the Thessalonians. And he says that he sent Timothy to establish and exhort you in your faith. The Greek verb is this notion of strengthening. So to establish and to exhort you in your faith is to strengthen you in your faith. You see, life and faith is like a journey of peaks and troughs. Sometimes we feel pretty strong and things are going well and we're on a high. But then other times we can go through moments where we feel weak and where things feel low and they are tougher. And in encouraging part one another, part of what we learn through this letter of 1 Thessalonians is for Paul the importance of strengthening one another in faith. Not just to go on and say what someone is doing well as an encouragement, strengthen them, but also to encourage them in ways they could do more by inspiring them to be more. So in verse 10 of chapter 3, Paul writes about, he's written all these amazing things about the Thessalonians, how you know great they're doing. But then he says, I'm also going to come, I want to supply what is lacking in your faith. That doesn't mean that he's coming to say, you need to do this, this and this. He's coming to supply, to encourage, to inspire them for more. And finally, is this encouragement that Paul gives in verse 14 of chapter 5. And he, there's one word in particular in English that we see, and he talks about help, helping people. Help. And that Greek word is antechestha, antechestha. And this verb, that word, that Greek word, is used in the New Testament of holding on to something. Cleaving to a person. See, the weak need to feel that they're not alone. And accordingly, the strong should hold to them. And in that way, give them support that they require. Sometimes in encouraging people, we need to hold on to them, to cleave them. For they know that they're not alone. And in that way, support them. Just to hold them. Who is there that you could hold on to now? Or maybe as you listen to this, you're sat there thinking, I need someone to hold on to me. Can I encourage you to reach out? To reach out to each other? You see, the key things that this letter teaches us about encouraging others is we need to be present to each person individually with genuine love. We need to recognize the value that each person has and love that person. We need to, as we look at people, as we talk to them, what do we see in that person that maybe they don't even see themselves, but what do we see of what they could be, of what God might do in them and through them? And how can we help them to get there? How can we strengthen them? How can we inspire them to be more? How can we hold on to them? How do we do all that? Is it through phone calls, text messages? You see, we're in another lockdown and that makes it hard because we're locked in to the world around us. And to encourage others means really getting out of that zone. If you think again about that person who's in that conversation, giving that attention, 
they're not just talking about themselves when you give someone attention in a conversation. You listen and you listen to what they are saying. You're not just locked into your own worldview. And so maybe in encouraging others, it's a real challenge for us in this season of lockdown, but to go beyond the walls, go beyond our lockdown pattern into reaching out to others, looking for people that we can encourage, that we can support. You see, there's a NUMA video by a guy called Rob Bell, uh, one particular that's called Today. And there's this phrase that I love in it. And he says, you know, we can think about getting round to it tomorrow, getting round to them tomorrow. But then when you wake up, it won't be tomorrow. It will be yesterday and you will have missed it. See, if we just keep thinking, I'll get round to contacting that person tomorrow, it won't be tomorrow. You'll wake up and it'll be yesterday and you'll have missed it. It's a real discipline to reach out to people, to encourage them. Encouraging others is much more than just saying that you hope someone's doing okay or, you know, you'll do really well at that. Keep going. It's, it is those things, but it's far more than that as well. It's being with the person for God and being with God for the person. And so can I encourage you, as we work through this book of 1 Thessalonians, read it. Look for ways that it can inspire you to encourage others, to reach out to them, to share God's love with them. Amen. And so we join together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
Let's pray for God's blessing on our community and all who live in it. God bless Romilly. God bless our key workers. God bless the NHS. God bless our businesses. God bless our neighbours. God's blessing on this community today and forevermore. Amen. And may God bless you. May you know his love, his grace and his mercy today and every day. Have a great week. Amen.